We said relations are a special kind of equation. Functions are a special kind of relation. I'm digging deeper inside. Where we think of those, do you remember how many variables a relation had? How many? Two. Always two, 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 right? The two variables are thought of as, now this is a really important idea and it's really, it's really the focus of what we're looking at in this topic. The two variables are thought of as <coughs> input, which is the x, and output which is the y. And once you think of them not as just two separate connected ideas, one of them leads to another one, and each input has one output, and one only. Okay. Now, this is a weird definition, so the best way to think about it is in contrast to what it's not. Have a look at these five relations that we've already drawn. Okay? Remember I said to you, functions are a special kind of relation. Most of the things that you've drawn here are functions, except for one. Let's have a look at this. Right? If this is the input, this is the output. Input, output. You put in an x, how many values of y do you get out? Exactly one. Right? In, exact, in just the same way, if you put in a value of x here, you put in an angle, you'll get out exactly one y value, right? Sine of 30 degrees is only a half. It's not like a couple of different things. I can keep going through this until you then get to this guy, right? You supply an x, like say x equals zero. When x equals zero, how many y's do you get? And the answer is more than one, right? Y can be plus or minus one. <laughs> this breaks our definition, right? You've got an input, you've got an output, but some of your inputs, not all of them by the way, some of your inputs have multiple outputs. Just look back at the circle. There are some inputs, exactly two in fact, that do give you exactly one output. Where are they? Can you see them? X equals negative one. Do you see that's got exactly one output, namely zero, and x equals one also has exactly one output. But it doesn't matter that somewhere it's okay, we needed to have it everywhere, okay? Each input, exactly one output all the time, okay? So maybe up on the, um, next to your table, you want a label. Four out of these five um, are functions. These guys are functions. They are also relations. Functions are a special kind of relation. But because they are more specific, we can say it's just like squares and rectangles. Like if I showed you this, that is a rectangle. I mean, assuming everything is you know properly drawn. But you wouldn't call it a rectangle, you'd call it a square, right? So being that these are more special, we call them functions, not just relations. This guy here is only a relation, doesn't fit the definition for a function. Did you have a question, Eric? Do you have to specify the function today? I'm glad you asked that. Okay, so along with this idea here, where one is an input and one is an output, we introduce new language and new notation. Okay? So we say y is a function of x. Right? Y is a function of x. Here's your input, right? Here's your output. You can say this in other ways too. You can say temperature is a function of altitude. Does that make sense? If you know where you are, you can, with some certainty, work out what temperature you are. The higher you go, the colder it gets. Okay? We say y is a function of x. The way we write this, do you remember I showed you this before? That, right? I said, look, that's a relation, right? If I want to make specific that I'm talking about this in function terms, because that is also a function, I would write this like this. And this is weird. There are things to dislike about this notation but it's so important and so useful for other purposes that it's worth swallowing the problems, okay? I want you to have a look at the left-hand side of that equation. If you didn't know any of this, what would that look like to you, the left-hand side? Doesn't it look like y times x in brackets? It's what it looks like, right? It's what you've been trained to think of it as. But in function notation, we read that as 
y is a function of x. And, and this is what the function is. This is how I define it. Okay? Um, I can say this in all kinds of ways. For example, I could say this. What do you think that means? What? The area of a circle is a function of its radius. And this is what that function is. Okay? Um, there are other things. You don't need to write this down. But you might have to say this. How would you read that? Come on, look, look, think. Look at the right hand side. This is a volume. Volume is a function of the radius and the height. And this is what that function is defined as. Does that make sense? We're particularly looking at that area where you've got one input and one output. Question. With the volume one, doesn't that make it three variables? Okay, so this is where this is why I said not to write it. This language does get because it's so useful and so powerful. It gets borrowed by all other kinds of branches of math and science as well. So what we're looking at, our, our rigorous definition is just one input, just one output. Okay, which keeps things nice and simple, but you can still do lots and lots of interesting stuff with it. Okay. Okay. Now this notation here, I want to stay on this. Right. We're talking about functions. So often your functions will not be called y. They'll be called f. Any guesses what the f stands for? Function. function. Okay. So this is a function. I'm calling it f. You can call it anything you like. You can call that function Eric if you want. I mean, I, I don't know why you would, but you can. Okay. So I can say Eric is a function of x. You hand Eric a number, and then Eric does this stuff to that number, right? So for example, I'm just going to run with it. I can say Eric of 5. What would that mean? I would take the number 5 and I'd place it into the function in place of x. So it would be uh, 5 squared plus 5 squared plus 6. So it would be 56. Eric of 5 is 56. You don't have to put just numbers in it. You can put in other algebra. So for example, you could go Eric of... I'm just. This is just too much fun, so I'm going to stop now. Um, I can get Eric of a plus 5. Right? So all that would mean is, everywhere I saw x, I'm going to put in a plus 5. I'm not going to expand this, but it would be a plus 5 squared plus 5 lots of a plus 5 plus 6. Do you agree? And I'm definitely going to stop here, but the thing is, you can put anything in here. You could even put in other functions. Don't think too hard about what that means, okay? But all that would mean is, okay, look, x squared plus 5x plus 6, that's what this function is, right? Well, now I'm going to put that back into itself. I guess in this case, I will write it. This would be x squared plus 5x plus 6 squared plus 5 lots of x squared plus 5x plus 6 plus 6. Does that make sense? Yeah, don't, don't do that. Okay. But my point is you can, and in some contexts, namely calculus, this idea of this input and output machine um, becomes incredibly powerful.